Okay, um, welcome back everybody. Um, what we're going to be going through in this lesson is the importance of the Q value and what it is. Okay? So, um, before we were looking at equilibrium, okay, and we were looking at K values, as you can remember. And um, we were looking at this reaction, which keeps coming back up. All right, and we were saying that equilibrium, um, once this equation reaches equilibrium, it will have some type of equilibrium constant where you can compare the value, the concentration of this times this divided by the concentration of this times this. Okay, let's say that the equilibrium constant in this case is 100. All right, so um, 100. Now, if we have um, we have another value that creeps in, and this is known as the um, concentration fraction, which is the Q value. Now, the Q value is really helpful in the sense that um, you use it for non-equilibrium conditions. So, basically, um, you use it for when the system um, isn't at this value here. So, let's say that um, let's say that you just whacked it, like, you just put in, okay put in a whole amount of reactants and you just initially blended them all up. So let's just say that concentration of A happened to be um, 5 molar. You just placed in, you decided to place in the concentration of B as 4 molar. Then you decided to put in the concentration of C as 2 molar and the concentration of D as 2 molar. And you just decided to make a milkshake out of all of this and just blend it all together, okay? So, obviously, these conditions are non-equilibrium conditions because, well, you don't have the proof. Non-equilibrium. You treat them as non-equilibrium at the moment. Alright? And that's because you have no proof that they're, they are at equilibrium. <clears throat> so, what ends up happening is we need to use this information to figure out this value known as the Q value. Now the Q value is no different in the way you calculate it as the K value. It's essentially the exact same thing, the exact same method of calculating in the sense that you take your products and you divide them by your reactants, okay? So what we're going to do, I hope you can see this, is we're going to write out the Q value is equal to still products divided by reactants just in the same way. So C, whoop, that's not C. C times by D um, divided by A times by B. All right, so essentially that is exactly the same way, if you remember back, that is the same way as we would calculate K. But the major thing is that this is non equilibrium. All right, so let's replace our C, C value with what it really is in, the, in here. So it's 2, replace that with 2, um, sounds like a mouse, um, 5 and 4. Alright, so if I just get rid of these in the, this bit of information and potentially put it higher because I don't know whether you guys can see this, but um, the Q value if you plug in all that data that was there before, you'll get 4 on the top and you'll get 20 at the bottom or 5 times 4 at the bottom. And as you can see, um, the 4s can cancel. They can cancel out and you'll just get um, 1 over 5. So the Q value is 1 over 5. And it doesn't have any units because it's just the same as the K value, the value units. Okay, now... Okay, so we know that Q is 1 over 5, so let's just compare them two. Let's put them neatly beside each other. Let's write Q is equal to 1 over 5 and K is equal to 100. Alright, nice clouds around this. Alright, so... <clears throat> okay, so we have those two, right? Now, let's compare them. This can change, okay? This shouldn't change. All right, it will never change unless you start changing the temperature, and we'll get to that. But the Q value obviously needs to um, increase, okay, because those were non-equilibrium conditions. What non-equilibrium conditions will want to do? 
essentially is they want to go back to equilibrium, okay? So, obviously, to um, get equilibrium, you have to make Q eventually equal to K. And the only way you can do this is if you increase the Q value. You must increase that value, right? Alright, so let's have a look at how we actually increase it. Let's remind ourselves what Q actually stands for. So Q is products divided by reactants. Reactants. And so what we find is we will find that in order to increase your value of Q, this has to shoot upwards. Okay, so products, there has to be more products generated and the reactants have to decrease. Okay, so that is the only way in which we can achieve a number eventually, Q of 100. And that way we know that we are definitely at an equilibrium. So, to increase the amount of product, your equation had to go forward. Okay, because that's the only way in which you can actually increase C and D. Okay, so just as a summary, you have... Um, just as a summary, first of all, the Q value is important for working out in which direction a non-equilibrium system will move in to achieve equilibrium, if that makes any sense. So, Q, if it's less than K, you have three different conditions. So this is condition number one. Condition number two is when the Q is exactly equal to K. And three is when Q is larger than K. And all three you can be you have to know, right? If Q is smaller than K, then you need to increase Q. So you need to make more products and therefore you need to go forward. Okay, so more products. If Q is equal to K, that is what you want. You have achieved equilibrium. <clears throat> and finally, the last one, if Q is greater than K. That means you have too much products, okay, not enough reactants, and you're going backward. Okay, so backwards. So hopefully this is a nice summary for you, and hopefully you've understood the Q value. If you have any questions, feel free to post them up. I will answer them with pleasure. All right, take care, and I hope you have a look at the website and see the tutoring that is available.